Okay, good morning, boys and girls. I hope y'all are doing well. Um, I hope y'all had a good weekend, and I hope you were able to finish uh, last week's assignment and answer all of the questions in the comments. So, today we're going to continue to talk about resources, and we're going to really focus on conservation. So, before we get started, make sure you have a pencil, a piece of paper, or a pen, and that you're ready. Um, so, go ahead and pause it if you need to. Okay. A resource is any material we find in the universe. So remember, it's stuff that we consume, like food and water, it's stuff we use for energy, like wind energy, like coal, like solar energy, or it's something that we use to make tools. So trees, we use trees to make paper and pencils. Um, there's two types of resources that we focus on, renewable and non-renewable. So renewable are resources that can be rapidly replaced by nature. So they are resources that can be replaced within one human lifetime at least. So on the shorter end, there's sun, which is replaced very quickly, solar energy. Um, and on the longer end, there would be some trees and animals that take 10, 20 years to fully grow up and mature. Um, a non-renewable resource, so that would be like coal, which takes millions of years to um, replace. So coal can eventually be replaced. If we were to use all the coal in the world today, it's not that it would never be replaced, but it would take millions of years. So not something that you would ever experience or that your children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren would ever experience. It would be millions of years from now. And the last vocab word is conservation just the responsible the use and protection of resources, and that's what we're going to focus on today. But before we do that, we're going to go over the three exit ticket questions we had at the end of last week's lesson. Okay, so at the end of last week's lesson, I asked you three questions. The first question was, what's the difference between a renewable and non-renewable resource? And I saw Caitlin, Israel, and Alfredo pretty much all said the same thing which is that renewable resources can be replaced and non-renewable cannot. And see that I added in the word there quickly because renewable resources are replaced quickly. Like I said with coal, coal, oil, natural gas, they can be eventually replaced, but it just takes millions of years. Um, question two was what's one resource you have used today? Was it renewable or non-renewable? I wrote down answers by Nakima and Carlos. Nakima wrote, I have used a pencil to write notes, and it's a renewable resource because it comes from trees. Great job. Carlos wrote, my mom used water to make soup. Water is renewable. Both great answers. And question three was, would you classify paper as renewable or non-renewable? So Sephora wrote, paper is renewable because it comes from trees. And then I really like what Adam wrote. Adam said, I agree with Sephora, but we have to remember to plant trees. And that has to do with conservation. So yes, trees are renewable, but the problem is there's so many humans and we're cutting down trees at such a rapid rate. And um, we have so many more wildfires now that we have to make sure that we're replanting those trees because we need those trees um, to create the oxygen, which we need to breathe. And because they provide a valuable natural habitat for a lot of animals. Okay. Now we're going to switch our focus to today's main lesson, which is conservation. So if you need to, get another pencil, get something really to write down, and get ready. Okay, so conservation is one of my favorite topics. Conservation is the wise use and protection of natural resources. So one example of wisely using resources is what Adam and Sephora were talking about um, in terms of planting trees. So using trees as a, as a resource is great, but we have to make sure that we're smart about it and then replant those trees. That way we can use them again, and that way we make sure we're not harming the local environment too much. Um, protection of resources. One of the things I think about is coal and oil. So we live around a lot of those big factories and, you, and refineries. And um, when you go around Bellway 8, out towards Wood Forest and Sam Houston, 
you see all that smoke sometimes, and you see all those shiny lights and refineries. Now, those refineries create a lot of really good jobs and a lot of income for a lot of people here. And they create the energy, which we use to make plastics, and which we use to power our cars and drive and our planes. So we need those refineries, we do. But all that stuff that releasing into the air is bad for us. So what we need to do is make sure that we measure what those companies are releasing into the air and that we regulate it to make sure they're releasing a safe amount. So we put rules in it. Now we already do that and our government does that. The problem is sometimes they don't do a good job of making sure that those companies are following the rules. So an example of how we can protect our natural resources is by making sure that the oil companies buy us are releasing safe amounts of toxins um, into the air and that it's not hurting us or our local environment. Now, whenever we talk about conservation, especially when we're dealing with education, we like to talk about the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So reducing is to use less of a resource, so to use less of something. So one way you can reduce your, um, the amount of something you use is, is you can carpool. So in, let's say you and a friend are all gonna go, and a bunch of friends are all gonna go somewhere. Instead of everybody driving in separate cars, you can take one or two cars so you're using less gas. Um, another way you can reduce is by walking or biking instead of driving sometimes. So I know JJ has been riding his bike a lot. I know Adam likes to walk and ride their bike. So instead of always driving places, walking or taking your bike to places. Another way is to use public transportation. So one of the great things about buses is that they can fit a lot of people on them. So sometimes it's better to take a bus instead of driving because instead of there being an extra five, 10, 20 cars, there's only one bus on the road. Um, for reuse, I like to think a lot of plastic water bottles. So Ms. Martinez and Ms. Parga this year, they went and bought those nice water bottles for all of their students. And a lot of you guys in class would bring these really nice water bottles that you can refill. That way you're not throwing away water bottles every single day. I know growing up, we drank out of plastic water bottles in my house and we would go through, I mean, a full pack of those every couple of days. So not only was that expensive, but we were actually making a lot of um, trash. We were going through a lot of plastic water bottles and plastic takes a long time to break down. It's not good for the environment. So I know now I'm trying to make a habit of never using plastic water bottles when I can. So at home, I use a Brita filter and at work, I would use coffee cups sometimes or those different cups that students bought me or the other teachers bought me. And I'd ask students to fill up the water from the filter. That way I wasn't um, using more plastic than I needed to. I was using a water bottle that I could reuse. The last thing is to recycle. I know you all heard a lot about recycling. So if you are going to drink plastic water bottles, that's fine. Just try to make sure that you recycle it. So instead of throwing it in your regular trash, all the gross, dirty stuff, keep it clean and put it in the recycling bin. That way the city can come and take it and it gives it back to those companies so they can use the water bottle again, or they give it to a plastic manufacturer and they melt the plastic down and they use it for something else. So that's just, these are three ways that you can think about how can I conserve resources? How can I reduce, reuse, or recycle resources to use less of them and to lower my impact on the environment? So what I want you to do now is I want you to think and I want you to think, hmm, what's one way that I conserve resources? So what's one way that you're already conserving resources? So for example, if you have a reusable water bottle, you are reusing a resource. Instead of using a lot of plastic, you bought one water bottle and you're saving, um, you're saving plastic. You're cutting down on the use of it. So that could be one way you conserve a resource. Another way could be that you walk to your friend's house. So these are just examples of ways you conserve resources, but I want to think of new ones. So think of one other way that you 
conserve a renewable or non-renewable resource. Anyway, hope you all had a good um, weekend. Hope you guys are all right. I hope you're not worried. And I will make another video for you all soon. So we're going to spend one more day talking about resources and conservation, just wrapping up a very short video. And then we're going to switch to the creation of fossil fuels, so the creation of oil, gas, and coal. So our non-renewable resources, how we make them. And it was nice seeing y'all. I will see you all with the video tomorrow.